Hey guys, welcome back. Today will be another installment of our high altitude balloon Arduino data logger. Hey guys, welcome back. Glad you could join me today. My name is Eric, for those of you new to the channel. Today we're going to hopefully finish up our Arduino data logger for the high altitude balloon project. What I've got on the breadboard here, if you didn't see the previous videos, uh, check them out, it'll explain a whole lot. Um, what we've got is a data logger, an Arduino Nano logging to SD card with real-time clock, onboard battery monitoring, barometric pressure, and temperature via it squared c Today we're going to add the final external temperature sensor, which is going to log the temperature of essentially near space, and uh, I think I'll add the Bluetooth module today and that should round out everything I want to put on here for now. I'm starting to decide to try and keep things simple so I uh, better stop adding stuff. This is the bare minimum and then we'll get it uh, hopefully working on the breadboard and we'll transfer it to a PCB. So we'll get some components together. We'll go to the Arduino kit. Hopefully I can do this with the camera knocking the camera over preferably uh, what we need from here we need actually it's right on top uh, LM I believe it's LM 35 temp sensor we're gonna use this guy right here and from down in here there should be a whole bunch of HC06 Bluetooth modules but one of them should be hooked to there we go HC06 Bluetooth module. This is going to allow us to see the data from the data logger from outside the payload section of the high altitude balloon for troubleshooting before uh, before we launch this thing. Make sure it's working. So let's go ahead and start making this stuff. So what we'll do is we'll take this LM35 temp sensor and what I've got here is a whole bundle of servo wire that uh, was uh, purchased for the InMove robot project. And uh, I think I'll just use, this a nice, it's three conductor, and I think I'll use a section of this and we'll hook it up to the sensor here, and let's get it working. So what I did is I went online and found the pin out of this sensor. So it looks like our supply is gonna be on the left, our output is gonna be in the middle, and our ground is on the right. So let's go ahead and hook it up. So I just went ahead and stripped these back a little bit. We'll just tin the wires. Hopefully I can do this well on camera. It's awfully hard to work with a camera in the way. I don't know how Dave, Dave Jones always does this. There. So those are tinned. And we'll go ahead and I think what we'll do is we'll just shorten up these pins a little bit. And we'll just uh, add them on there and then I've got a bit of a plan. Let's see if we can get these hooked on here. So we're going to do ground to this side. Let's start with the supply. Spread those open a little bit for now. So we'll go ahead and seal this up. Plan here is I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue. Let's take our trusty heat shrink tubing, run it over the line here, hopefully. If I've got the right size. Look, we should. This is still a little bit soft, which is exactly what I want. Not too soft that it's going to bring the wires back together and short them, though. That would be undesirable. And then we'll take my trusty hot air rework gun. Alrighty guys, <clears throat> so what I got is not what I expected. I had to cut this thing back apart, um, well for no reason whatsoever. Uh, I thought I might have a short, but uh, what I have is my temperature readings are bouncing all over the place here. I doubt I can show it too easily. It's the external temp. You can see it's jumping pretty wildly, 10 degrees each way, more. So uh, what I was doing was hitting it with some uh, free spray here 
and just seeing uh, what other problems I have. So I have two problems. One, it won't go negative in the code with the sensor, which is bizarre because it, if you unplug the sensor, it goes negative. And uh, it also is bouncing around like crazy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to have a re-look at my code here and see what's going on. But uh, that's pretty much it for now. And uh, I'll see if I can get that sorted. Well, I kind of wish I didn't jump right to hardware. Uh, on the screen here, it's probably not going to show up real good. I got a nice chilly Coors Light on the go because I got a little frustrated here. The external temp is stable now. Um, what I did is do a search online. I'll post it in the description. Uh, actually, on the Adafruit forums, I found that to, if you're doing subsequent analog reads, the analog to digital converter gets basically bunged up. There's a, uh, You can read it in the links if this happens to you, but you end up getting bouncing readings. It works now. We're nice and stable. What I do is you take an analog read of the pin, you throw that out, and then you take another analog read right away after a very small delay of, uh, I don't even remember what it was, maybe five microseconds or something. Small anyway. Anyway, that's working. I'm going to reheat heat shrink this and move along. Well, as is the nature of experimenting, what I found when I got looking this up, I can't get below zero because I have to supply a negative voltage to this sensor to go below zero. It's just that simple. So, what a new plan. This will be an, yet another internal temperature monitor for, I'll stick this up against the camera, um, one of the cameras, and I'll use it for testing this thing when I start putting it in the freezer and, uh, yeah, just beating it up. Um, what we've got, we've got stable readings here now, and I'll quickly go ahead and hit this thing with a little bit of freeze spray. We should see that external temp dropping, and we're pretty much bottomed out there. So, yep, working good. Uh, too bad I can't go into the negative without doing some uh, more board work. So, I'm just going to move ahead with a different external. Um, I'll look into that and I'll hook something up. Alrighty, guys. So, as is the nature of building and experimenting. I did discover uh, that this sensor won't go below zero without a negative voltage. So I'm going to quite simply switch the internal and the external. I'm going to use this for an internal and I'm going to use this as the external. This one I just tested down to minus 50 with the, the free spray, no problem. So pretty happy with that. Easy solution. Uh, I went ahead and I hooked up the Bluetooth module. Really simple hookup, you just hook up the, the power and ground and hook up the RX and the TX to the Arduino. Uh, we can't use a serial COM to the computer during that, but because uh, uh, I'm not going to do the software serial. Uh, I, don't, I just uh, don't have enough room. So that's working good. All you do is hook up the RX from here to the TX and then the RX to the TX and that's all there is to it. So we'll go ahead and see what we get. Hopefully we can get this to work. We'll connect to, if we can get the, the scan to go here. Got an HC06, that's good. And we'll connect. <coughs> With any luck, we should start seeing some data. <laughs> Status failed in connect. Hmm, well, that's not good. Go figure. As soon as we fire up the camera, things start failing. Go figure. should go solid. Ah, what do you know? Don't know why it failed the first time, but hey, so be it. This is the Cena Blue Term and uh, Android app, and that is our voltages, pressure, temps, all the good stuff. That's what we needed. Uh, da, 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 da. Is it coming through correctly? Sure looks like it. Um, 
I'm not sure how we can, we'll have to see how the app works, whether we can pause it, or what I'll do is I'll slim down this text for the serial. This is strictly the serial printing, not what's written to the SD card, so we don't need this much text, and we can get it all on one screen. That's a, a two-minute two code mod, really, really easy, because I want to be able to see that everything is working. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Well, guys, this, in a nutshell, is the complete Arduino data logger. We are done. I see no reason to go any further with this. What I'll do is I'll start transferring this to a PCB and get it so we can start testing it. And let's beat the crap out of it and see how it works. Start freezing it, heating it, and uh, upcoming videos I'll show you the payload heating and we'll see how this thing works. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching guys. Good luck if you're building an Arduino high altitude balloon or if this helps you with any of your Arduino builds, please let me know. Thanks for watching.